this is St. John, and this is St. Thomas. But which island is better for your vacation? So you're planning a trip to the U.S. Virgin Islands and maybe you don't know where to start. Do you spend most of your time on the lively St. Thomas or maybe spend most of your time on the more serene St. John? In this video today, we're going to be giving you our opinions on each of the islands, the benefits of both, and sharing our recommendation on how you should split your time between St. Thomas and St. John. We're gonna share with you which island we think has the better food, beaches, and things to do and see. Before we talk about these islands, we need to talk about getting there. We found cheap tickets to St. Thomas. In our opinion, that's the best way to visit the Virgin Islands because it gives you more time to explore and relax. However, plenty of cruises run through St. Thomas if you want to just make the island a stop on your vacation. The same can't be said for St. John because it's small and mountainous. You can only get there by boat. Ferries run to and from St. Thomas, so you can easily hop on one to get to the other island. The trip takes about 30 minutes depending on which port you leave from. The passenger ferry costs about $8 one way if you leave from Red Hook and $20 if you leave from Charlotte Amelie. Car ferries only leave from Red Hook, however, and they cost $50 one way or $65 for round trip. You're going to the Caribbean, so naturally one of the first things you probably want to know is what are the beaches like? St. Thomas and St. John have some of the best beaches in the Virgin Islands, maybe even ranking among all of the beaches in the Caribbean. Two of the most popular are Megan's Bay in St. Thomas and Trunk Bay in St. John. In a lot of ways, they are similar. Long stretches of beach with soft sand, gorgeous turquoise water, and mountainous backdrops. But they are also different. Megan's Bay does tend to get busier as it is an incredibly popular spot for cruise passengers to hang out on their port days. Since Trunk Bay is a part of the National Park on St. John and space for cars is more limited, you might not find the huge crowds at Trunk Bay. So we've done a fair bit of exploring on the beaches on both St. Thomas and St. John. From what we've seen so far, I gotta say that St. John takes the cake. The water's clearer, it seems calmer. That could just be a today thing. There's less people, which is nice. The views are more views incredible. incredible. Just more of a chill laid back vibe yeah. where St. Thomas just has all of those cruise people yeah. visiting, yeah. so it's, it's a lot of, it's controlled chaos, but this is just a much more serene experience. Don't get us wrong. The beaches on both islands are absolutely incredible. Our favorite two beaches on St. Thomas were Linquist Beach and Secret Harbor. We visited both of these beaches multiple times on our trip and really never dealt with huge crowds. On St. John, our top two beaches have to go to Trunk Bay and Maho Bay. Trunk Bay was hands down the most beautiful stop on our trip and Maho Bay gave us the unforgettable experience of snorkeling with giant sea turtles. Speaking of snorkeling, any of these beaches is gonna offer great snorkeling experiences. Many beaches, including Megan's Bay and Cokie Point on St. Thomas and Maho Bay on St. John offer rentals if you don't have your own snorkeling gear. As Sarah mentioned, the snorkeling at Maho Bay can't be beat. We saw at least six massive sea turtles and apparently there are stingrays there as well. Although we didn't see any of those on our trip. If you really wanna get up close and personal with fish, Koki Point is your spot. This is the beach where schools of fish swim right up to the reef, just a few feet from shore. For your planning, it's important to note that many of these beaches on the US Virgin Islands have entry fees and parking fees. So be sure to have cash on hand. St. Thomas is the more popular island and as such offers more in the way of activities. You'll find more excursion options like zip lining and scuba diving, but St. John offers more in the way of hikes. The island of St. John is 60% protected national parkland, so you get plenty of opportunities to spot wildlife and take in the breathtaking views. We would also say if organized tours and excursions are more your jam, then St. Thomas is the way to go. If you're more interested in getting out in nature and exploring, the beautiful parks and wildlife of St. John is the island for you. And really, if you're looking for more of a secluded vacation, St. John might offer better choices as it's less developed than its neighbor, St. Thomas. So I think I like driving in St. John's a little bit better than St. Thomas. And the reason being is that one, it's not as crowded. So you can pretty much drive at your own pace. Also, the roads are really nice compared to St. Thomas. Um, these are all perfectly paved and you get to see some wildlife when you drive. So we saw a couple of donkeys and goats along the way. And allegedly a mongoose. And allegedly a mongoose or a ferret or a weasel. Yeah. <laughs> 
Both islands have incredibly winding roads, but on St. Thomas, they seem to drive with more urgency. Talk like that one Part of that is because on St. John, the speed limit is about 10 miles per hour through much of the national park to protect the wildlife. I can't move like that one. one thing that St. Thomas is known for is shopping. As we've already mentioned, St. Thomas is a cruise port and it's much more catered towards tourism. So there are significantly more shopping opportunities than what St. John can offer. So admittedly, since we spent less time on St. John, we didn't get to eat at as many places as we did on St. Thomas. Still, St. Thomas is a more lively atmosphere with more options for bars, restaurants, and shops to explore. Our favorite restaurants on St. Thomas was Brooks for local food, and we ate there multiple times. It was just that good. So we got the conch with butter sauce and garlic, and then we got peas and rice and plantains, and then some potato salad. And the burgers at Tap and Still could stand up for some of the best burger joints that we've had in the States. Check out our food tour video on St. Thomas to get more details on the spots that we ate. Skinny Legs near Coral Bay of St. John had some pretty good burgers themselves and strong drinks. No, no, I pay attention, no, no. Go give me wisdom, no, no. I better listen, no, no. Although we're leaning heavily towards giving St. Thomas the nod for better food options, we really can't judge St. John fairly since we only were there for a day or two. You probably noticed by now that we aren't talking about accommodations, and that's because we only rented an Airbnb on St. Thomas for our trip. But the Airbnb we stayed at had some amazing views. Which island is better for you? Well, it really depends on what you're looking for in a vacation. Both islands are so beautiful in their own way and you really should go make a detour to see both. If we had to choose, the clear winner for us is St. John. Believe it or not, we're both pretty introverted, so the relaxing and secluded feel of St. John goes a long way to sway our opinion. But we wanna hear what you think as well. Leave a comment on which island you prefer and why. And if you like videos like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to our channel so that you never miss a detour. So we've done a fair bit of exploring on both of, on, so we've done a fair bit. But Tony has a habit of leaving things on the top of cars and he just left his glasses up there, so they just fell off. 